What's up, Patreon? And today, let me change this. Now, they might see this on YouTube one day or someday. But today is July the 1st. I'm going to put the 3rd because that's probably the day they see it. Y'all get to see it now, Patreons. Now, we talk about basketball all the time. And people don't understand basketball actual plays. So I made this exclusively for my Patreons first because you guys get to know everything before everyone else. Class is in session. That is correct, Don. So now, since class is in session, let's learn today. So what are we learning? Well, there I've blown it up pretty big. Here is a common play. Yeah, my artistic work has gone down the hill. But this is the three-point line, free throw line. This is the inner paint. Now, we take a look at this. The one is the point guard. The two is the shooting guard. The three is the small forward. Four is the power forward. The five is the center. In case you needed that explained to you, which you probably shouldn't need that explained to you. But... um Here's how it moves, right? This play is very known throughout basketball, normally ran, ran by the Detroit Pistons. The Detroit Pistons, the bad boy Pistons, that is. This is one of their plays. Now, Isaiah Thomas was the point guard. He would normally attack from the left side and let Joe work on the right side. He can go and attack you from any side, but he normally would attack you from the left with Lambeer being his big man right here, his five. And the purpose of this, let's get the defenders out here. There are defenders. The purpose of the defenders being right there and these guys being where they are it's quite simple. Let me see if I can get you a little bit closer to the action. Because seeing my face don't really mean anything if you can't see the board. Now, what they're going to do is what a lot of teams did at that time. Pick and roll, which is what all today's basketball is. But they were so good with their pick and roll. Because what Lambeer would do when Isaiah would get the ball, he normally would fake right with the crossover dribble, keep his dribble, and dribble towards Lambeer for the pick and roll. Normally, this is the defender. They are taught, because it's a big man, he's going to run out and guard Lambeer. This guy's trailing the play, right? So he's going to run into the Lambeer pick right here. The defender knows this guy, normally your five, goes and cuts towards the basket. Bill Lambeer is not going to cut to the basket. Isaiah is going to go on the pick. So now the center's got to go and try to figure out what they're going to do here. And normally the four has to come over here and help Isaiah, who's going to come normally here to the middle of the court, or he's going to slash in a diagonal where spot there to make the four have to collapse while the three is out here. And normally sometimes the three comes and helps. Now, in this situation, Lambert would go out here because he's very deadly shooting the ball from out here from his left side. So Lambeer is a big that could shoot from outside. He could shoot threes, he could shoot twos, and this shot would be open for him. 
Isaiah would come here and swing the ball out to Lambert for a jump shot or a three, depending on what the big man decided to do. By this guy being late, the third guy, the three, would beeline it straight to the rim, depending on who's the three at that point. So if this is Zeke, you got Joe Dumars who's here. And at this time, they had uh, Dantley. You got Lambeer, of course. Then your four was Mahorn during that time. And then you had uh, Dantley. So Dantley liked to work on the right side. So if you give him the ball here, Dantley could beat you here and will work there or he'll get the ball in the post. Mahorn would normally come down and start crashing the boards. Dantley comes in and slashes to help out so he can get the a pass from Isaiah right here. And then he could cook and start going in from the free throw line. Joe Dumars would stay normally out here on the wing so he can work. If he swings it out to Joe, Joe can work on his defender here, and he's basically better beating them off the dribble. Now, this is a vintage play, and it's hard to beat because all of your weapons are on this side that could score, but also your five could score. Now, this changed over the years due to personnel. When James Buda Edwards came on the team, and Mahor was gone, James Buddha Edwards became a starter. So now, what happens when this is erased? What happens when all of this is changed? Well, all of these directional dots have to move because you have to run your plays according to personnel. Now, this play is harder to run when you have, this play is harder to run when you have, um, like, let's say, like right here, your four, is your five is still Lambert, right? So you know what he do. That's Isaiah. This is Joe. This is now Rotman. And this is Buddha. So you got Buddha Edwards there, right? Now Buddha Edwards is the four, but he plays more like a five. So Buddha's gonna be closer. He's not going to go out to the three-point line. That four now is going to be right here. And Rodman at the three is going to be right here. He's not going to be at the three-point line, or sometimes he does. He's athletic enough to beat his defender to the rim. Joe is still in the same position. So if Isaiah runs this pick and roll with Lambeer now, the defender... Normally, the three and the four are a lot closer to the rim. So when Isaiah makes this move, he got a choice. He can go with the right hand or he could finish with his left. Isaiah could do with either one. But now this play doesn't work as well because Buddha's guy is closer to the rim. So he's closer to Isaiah and Buddha have to block him out. So Buddha's blocking to keep him off Isaiah is key. Or Isaiah could find Buddha on the inside for a pass, or he normally would hit Rodman who's slashing to the basket. Isaiah could hit Rodman for a pass, or he kicks it out to Joe. So the play had to be restructured because people were starting to like, don't leave Lambert no matter what. You know, stay with Bill Lambert, he's gonna kick it out. We got help for Isaiah on the pick and roll. So Rodman would normally get the ball now. 
This is how Robin got a lot of his baskets. He was slashed to the basket, get the rebound. If they missed, Buddha be down there and he'll help out. But it made it tougher as guys learn your, as players learn your defense, but it's about personnel. Each play could have many different options. Right? We've seen that all around the board. Now, let's take all that down for right now. Now, that's the vintage piston offense pick and roll. They can run it on the right side. If Lambeer wants to shoot here, let's say at the top of the key, that's called, that's called the double... They got a double X and a, a regular X play that they run. Now, when you look at, you know, how everything is here, and let's say we do it like that. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Coach Sino, yep, that's right. When you look at the top NBA plays, right, you start looking at how other teams attack when you go man-to-man -man offense and all of these different like, things they come up with. Now, each play can go haywire because there's so many movements. Like if the Golden State Warriors, you think a lot of what they do is – freestyle but it's not it's actual sets that they're running out there on the court to see how the defense responds to the sets they might run it again they might check it the coaches are watching for all of this now let's use the pistons other play that the golden state warriors actually use and a lot of other teams use here's what the golden state warriors do The one is here. This is Steph Curry. One is Steph. The four is here. The five is here. And the actual two is actually here. You, you follow? So where's the three? Right here. Now, this is a very weird organizational play. But the Warriors are a very weird, different team. Now, sometimes the five is here and the four is here. The four is Draymond, right? Let's use Golden State. Steph, Clay, Fifth, who the hell? We'll just say Looney for now, All right? Looney and a three, hell. Who is their three right now? That that rotates. But let's say Poole, okay? Jordan Poole. Why are they in this set? And they're so close together at this point. It's because the play is getting ready to develop. Looney's going to set a pick for Steph or... Dre will set the pick for Steph. And what Looney would do on offense is right here, he would get the ball or he would have the ball in his hands or Dre would have it in his hands at the top of the key, which is weird, right? Because they're getting ready to run their set and they're giving their players time to get in their position. What Looney's going to do is boom, boom, boom. After he comes here and sets a pick for Steph, Steph is going to move here. He, after he sets the pick, Looney is going to set that pick and shoot up here. Right? What is your boy Clay Thompson going to do? Hold on. The screen for some reason went dark on me. What is your boy? Uh, couldn't see y'all for a minute. I was getting timed out of my own PC. Now, 
What do you think after Looney sets the pick and curls, Steph curls out here? What is Clay doing? Clay's going here. Taking his defender all the way over there out of this play. Steph got all of this to work with. What is Draymond doing? Draymond's hanging around right here. Okay. Pool job, the three, is to do this. Diagonally slash to the basket from the three position. Looney is setting the pick, going to the basket, giving Steph an option to hit him. Or swing it back out to Dre, who moves here to the one position. They want to see how the defense is guarding this. Normally, if you into this play here, this is called, they run this play when um, the defenders are in a man-to-man defensive set, not a zone. This is a man-to-man -man offensive set that you'll see here. They will run this when guys are in man-to-man. -man. Clay's going to run to the corner. Beeline it that way to give the space for Steph. Looney's going to set the pick and cut diagonally straight towards the rim. Dre is not going to go to the rim right away. He's going to rotate over to where the one is. He's going to take that spot. So Steph will be here where the five is. Dre's going to be here where the four is. The five will move to here. The two will move to there. And Poole will slash to the basket. That is how the play is ran. Now, this play has variations because passes will be made throughout this play based on what the defenders do to guard it. Okay? If you follow me. Let's say the pick wasn't good enough and the defender is still with Steph. Steph didn't get free. Looney's covered here. Dre rolls over. Dre would, after he sees Steph didn't get the separation, Dre would still roll over to this spot, right? And this time, what would happen? Poole's not going to slash, or if he did slash, and he see he didn't get the ball. He see the players have developed. Clay's still going to go to his spot and stay. Clay's going to stay there until another play is called. So Clay is going to stay in that position and wait and see what happens in the next variation of the play. Each play has different variations to it. So now if they go there, the guy doesn't bet, bite on the fake. Dre would get the ball here. Draymond would rotate to the same thing. So now Dre gets the ball. Dre is now here. Steph at the one is now there. Looney at the five is now there. Let me see how that play went. Where did I put the eraser? Okay, my bad. I'm getting old. So after the pick and roll, Steph is now here with the ball. Looney's now there. Now, Poole, after seeing the slash, he's going to cut back out, get out of the paint, because Looney's in there now. Looney's now in that position. Dre has the ball. So now the play is going to be changed. They didn't bite. Everybody, the, the pick and roll didn't wasn't picked up well. So now everything's going to change. Okay? Dre is going to set the play now. So Dre is now there. Poole is here at the three. Clay at the two is right there. And now the play is changing. So now that the, you know, 1A didn't work, now let's go with 1B, which is going to be another version of this play. Same play. Now, Poole, what he's going to do now, so now you have 
One, two, three, four, and five. Looney is still to go towards the paint, no matter what. So now you know you got only a slight moment in time because he's right there at the free throw line. So he's not near the line to where he's inside the paint consistently, but he beelined it to the free throw line. Very key. So you don't have to worry about five seconds. Dre is going to be here, and he's going to call out the new play or the 1B. Poole will now rotate here, take his defender here. Steph Curry is going to curve, and a pick is going to happen here now. I don't know if you can see that, but the pick and roll is going to happen right near the free throw line. Yep. Here we go. Dre has the ball. He's waiting for guys to move. He'll either hit Poole, who's right here. Because Poole is now coming up. Three gets the ball. Draymond hits him with the ball. Steph is coming off a pick. So now Steph off the pick and roll. Now you got a second chance to set this pick. Clay hasn't moved. Once Steph gets the ball here, Clay now rotates here. Clears a space for Steph. Now Clay will move to here. Steph, if he sees Steph makes a move to beat the guy off the dribble off the pick and roll, Clay would stay there. If Steph goes out to here. Clay moves here. He moves on the wing. Steph will cut, zip the ball. Looney will rotate even deeper then. Once he sees Steph drive, he goes with it. So this leaves this lane open to hit the pass to Clay. Clay would normally shoot the ball in this scenario about at least 60% of the time. Unless it's just covered and then they have to go to something else, this play will go to Clay Thompson. You have to play to your personnel. Play to your personnel. Hopefully people are watching right now. Hopefully you guys are learning some things. You know, not just wasting my time here. But people always talk about how much you don't know, right? So when you start seeing plays like that and how they it's, it plays are crazy. Like they get nuts. LeBron runs a basic play. We already know that. High pick and roll. One, four, four out for LeBron lovers. You know, y'all love to see that. Basically, one guy here, one guy here, uh, near the wings, and then LeBron's here at the top. And whoever's got the smallest guy who's guarding him, he'll call them out for a pick, and then they would come up and do the pick and roll. And he'll get here. It's so, so pathetic. And high pick and roll basketball is what everyone uses now. But you can guard high pick and roll. You know, all you have to do is lay a guy out and run through that pick. Explode through the pick. That's it. All it takes is the maximum effort. That little guy, whoever's going to come pick you, they're going to know not to come pick you no more. Boom! Make sure your elbow gets into their sternum 
when you're moving so it looks like you're just running, pick your arms up, boom! So they get a little of that point of that elbow right in the chest and kind of knock the wind out of them. So when they're going to be, they're going to be like this next time they set a pick, they're going to be real nervous coming to set that pick. They're going to be loosey-goosey when you explode through the picks. Well, people don't like to get hit. <laughs> uh, well, a lot of people run a lot of San Antonio Spurs plays. And those uh, Spurs plays are basically um, inside pick plays. Everything is inside the paint with the Spurs. Their plays are ran with a lot of variations, a lot of movement. Oh, God, that's terrible. And the wrong side. The Spurs are like this. Championship Spurs with Parker, Ginobili. Okay. Tony Parker... With the ball, you had one, you had the two, you have three, you have four, and Timmy, and then whoever the fifth guy is, he would be here. He wouldn't be at the three-point line. He would be in. Timmy would be a little bit on the outside, not that close to the three-point line. He would be, he would be in some. So the four and five would be close to each other. This is the Spurs play. They rarely have anybody on the three-point line unless it's their two or three. And sometimes, mainly, they're one. Tony Parker would get a pick up top. It depends on what the defense is, but normally this is what they would like. Their four and five are almost on each side of each other. Timmy likes it on the left side. So Tim would pop out right here to get the ball, but not to the three-point line. He would still be within the zone. This is just made smaller. So for your life, what Tim Duncan would do would get the ball. The fifth guy would be right there getting ready almost to hit the paint. What Tony Parker would do is to get the ball and cut immediately off the pick and start attacking from a – he would curve and get to a, an attack position coming towards the free throw line with so much speed that by the time you get there as a defender, he's already in his shot. Tony Parker had almost an unguardable shot that Tim Duncan's man would have to come up, the defender would have to come up and guard it, but he's a two-foot takeoff guy. He throws a he jumps with both feet up in the air and he throws a hook. And that shot is you're not prepared to block it because you're not expecting him or anybody to jump off two feet and just stop in the motion and throw it up. You're like, that you're you're when you play somebody in basketball, you see the rhythm of them getting ready to go up for a shot, a hook, or anything. You see the motions. Tony Parker's it's so fast. And he has a stop jump hook. That that thing became his lethal weapon in the NBA. As Tony Parker would get to this position with great speed. So now Tim has popped out to a spot where he wants the ball. The three would slide all the way and cross over to here. Normally, a Bruce Bowen or whoever they had would go to this corner and stay. The two slides all the way over to where the three was. This is the Spurs play. So their two is now here. The three has cut all the way over to the corner. The fifth, he comes up but stays a little out, just like Tim did. Tim... He goes right here, and then once he sees Tony, either the defender comes up to stop Tony Parker to help out, the defender gets there, or the fifth, 
guy comes over to five, comes over to help. Let's say Tim Duncan man comes to help. He could either shoot it or he could drop it off to Tim. Tim got basically an easy buck. Let's say the fifth guy, the guy said, hey, you stay with Tim, whoever the fifth guy is on the Spurs. If he gets the ball, boom, Tim's going to cut towards the basket. He's going to hit Tim with a pass or alley -oop. Normally, you have Boris Diaw, somebody who could pass from the paint, and he would hit that play. If that was Kawhi Leonard, they run to the corner, but this is probably Bruce Bowen at that time. Bowen would go to that corner, and this was the play the Spurs ran at will. And... Destroy teams. Won championships running the same play. Yeah, I know, right? Sounds pretty crazy. But this is how the elite win games. And like I say, what, what was changed is now the same. Well, what is the zone? Okay. Now let's see. That'll make it a lot better for you. Put the three-point line up. Right? All right. Normally, when teams play zone, this is how they do it. You got one player here, one player there. Right? One guy here, one guy here, and another guy here. That's normally their zone defense. Right. So no matter what you, you got set, you got two guys on each side, one in the middle, one there, one on the corner. They're in their natural set of a zone. Now, how do you attack the zone? Normally, interior passing destroys a zone. First off, people like to run pick and roll. I don't like to do that on zone. So normally, I would have the five go in the middle, get the ball to the five, and have movement. Movement will kill a zone. That's what you would normally do. I would pass to the five because normally your five is here. Let's take the Lakers, right? All right, say the, the Lakers are in a zone. This would be LeBron. Um, AD would normally be here. So that would be AD. Who the hell else they got on the team? They fire everybody every week. So you don't know who the hell on the team anymore. But LeBron would be there, AD, hell. Um, let's just say D. Russ and that hillbilly Kobe, he'll be up there or something. You know, I'll put them up there. Whoever the hell the third guy is or fourth guy on the team of the Lakers, well, so they would it would look something like that, right? Bra would have the ball either on that side to defend or do whatever it is that he thinks he's the defense is. He would be normally on that position. So whoever the guy is, right, that's coming up, AD would normally slide when depending on what they're doing. Now, it depends on if he's in foul trouble or what have you. Normally, he's at the point of defense. Depending on who they guard and who brings the ball up, 
Like if they were playing Golden State, this would switch. AD would be up a little bit more because they're not going to play inside. But let's say they're playing the Nuggets, right? And on the Nuggets, anybody could bring the ball up, so your your zone would change. But this is a team you wouldn't want to play the zone on because they'll they'll destroy you with the pass and they'll just do pick and roll because your guards are too small and they'll just go after your mismatches. So let's say Reeves can't guard Murray or D. Russ on Murray. D. Russ is not a physical guy. He's not a really good defender. So you get him in pick and roll. And you want to do pick and roll with the Joker, who's your five. So Gordon or Michael Porter Jr., they would be here. Porter Jr. is your four. Your three would be here. And what about your two? Well, your two is going to cut in and try to stop and disrupt what's happening in the middle. So your two is here, and this is how the Denver set would look until they get established. Michael Porter Jr. would float here to a corner. The two will cut and try to pick off a man and then pop out to this side. So the two would make a whole curve from here all the way to there to try to pick off the man. Murray will get a pick and start from here and make a whole circle himself. He'll get the pick right here from Jokic. Jokic will move to the top of the key. He's going to go right on a curve and go all the way to the right side of the court where he loves to get the ball. And he'll shoot from there. And he'll cut all the way over. This is a crisscross play. Yeah, uh, basically. And then after that, what is the three doing? <laughs> Cutting right to the basket. And he's putting pressure on Braun to have to come over and guard. Everybody's going to have to guard, which is Gordon. So Gordon's going to be slashing. Either he's going to have a dunk or he's going to have the ball in the post, but they're going to be preoccupied. Normally, Murray would score on this possession. And in the, in the playoffs, this is normally what happened. When he got the ball there, he scored. Or if he didn't see anything or if Gordon was covered, they would kick it back to the Joker. And the Joker would have a ball at the top of the key, which would bring AD up here. And it just cracked the Lakers up. You beat the Lakers and you beat old teams with movement and not just your movement, their, their movement. They got to move. So you got to have guys that are a threat to score on the court. So guys can't cheat and rest and try to get rest. Everybody's a scoring threat. So. I'm not going to confuse everybody with like so many plays. It's a million and one plays people can run. They all come off the same type of sets. Everything. Um, the, the Chicago Bulls and the triangle offense. Oh, God. This bullshit offense. All right. Hold on. Let's make it bigger. Now, the triangle offense, which people think is unguardable, is the dumbest analogy ever in history. Um, here's the five. The one. The two. The three. And the four. <sighs> Here's the 
Here's the triangle offense. Right? This is why it's called the triangle, people. Is because it's basically a stupid zone. And you're moving the ball in, no matter where the pieces go. One will give the ball, normally the point guard will swing it, be John Paxson. He swings it to Michael Jordan. Jordan gets the ball. Paxson, Jordan would go over here to the two. So, I mean, to where the one is. All right. So now the two is here, the one is here. And then they'll swing it to Scotty, who's the three, because he'll come down and he'll come up here. So now Scotty goes from there up to here. He's the three with the ball. So the three is here. Then Paxson will go here in the corner. John Paxson's there. Scotty's up here at the three position. The five doesn't normally move. Now the pass will go to Michael. Michael will throw the ball into Scotty, who comes up, dips it to Scotty. Michael cut over. Then the ball would hit Paxson to Scotty, back to him. Anyway, this is the triangle, right? Everywhere you go on the court, you have a triangle. Normally, it's ran through the center, Bill Cartwright. That's what the play is designed to always have a triangle on the court where you pass the ball to. But Bill Cartwright isn't the guy you run the offense through, so they never ran the play correctly. The play was designed for the center to be the passer and finding the guy because he would always have two guys on his perimeter no matter where they were on the court. This is why it was called the triangle offense, and it didn't amount to dog shit. Because <laughs> I keep telling people they didn't run the triangle correctly when they were running it. That's why in L.A., when they ran the triangle, they ran it with Shaq. And that they really didn't run it then. It was just dump it to Shaq, let them dump. <laughs> Listen, they've been lying to y'all for so long. They had Michael Jordan. <laughs> Wasn't no damn triangle. When the game's down the stretch, you think they were running the triangle? They was get the ball to Mike, and Mike, you got to save us. And Michael Jordan had to be Michael Jordan. That's how they won those damn games. It wasn't no damn triangle offense. <laughs> Y'all believe that all you want. They want to, anytime somebody has credit, they got to give it up to this old wrinkly white guy who the black guy just couldn't do nothing without his knowledge, right? It's dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. But that's it. Sky, Phil was the Zen master. Once he got there, everything just started working out. No, no, no. So... I don't want to keep you all day, plus I got stuff to do. So <laughs> thank y'all, Patreons, for listening. Y'all get this first. Uh, it might be on YouTube uh, one day, probably uh, someday I'll release it to them, and we can go over some other plays, but we'll be doing this all day. It's a lot, it's a lot of, like, plays, like, zigzag, and then you cut out. You know, they coaches do stuff like that. Like, you just zigzag, and then you cut towards the basket. Set up out of bounds plays. Um, if there's no time on the clock, like 0.7 seconds, you fake in. Like, I don't know why people believe that. You fake in, you have somebody set a back pick, and a guy will cut towards the basket. You throw an alley oop towards the basket, let him try to score. Ah, so many plays. So, you see why I get frustrated when I see bad basketball. I don't like bad basketball, Mr. White. <laughs> don't like bad basketball. And when I see someone who's like LeBron James, who has no moves, to get all this accolades, it just drives me insane when I've seen real players do it.
Yeah, I'm not really good on him. Lord, but it is what it is. So anyway, hopefully you guys understood this. Maybe you don't. Maybe you recognize what should happen on the court, what doesn't now. Now people are doing pin downs. They're following the defender, going dribbling behind the defenders now. So the pin downs is coming into play. Um, Isaiah Thomas is responsible for the pin downs. He brought those into the NBA when he had the Indiana Pacers. The more you know. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to the page. Thank you, guys. If you want to support my cash app, it is Carcino, K-A-R-C-E-N-O. And that's me on Cash App. So thank you. Appreciate that. Patreons, love y'all, man. We got more to come. One.